Hey, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be installing and walking you through some of the features of the Trust Wallet. And we're gonna be doing this on an Android device. Now, the Trust Wallet is available on iOS devices as well as Android. But since the dApps feature is not no longer available on iOS and was removed to comply with the App Store rules, we'll be doing the installation on an Android phone so you can see the full functionality of the app. So let's get started. Just a little background information on the Trust Wallet. This app allows you to store cryptocurrency on your personal device. It also allows you to check for current prices. It allows you to exchange your dollars, pounds, euros, whatever currency that you're using in crypto coins like Ethereum or Bitcoin. And you can do the opposite. You can take your Bitcoin, Ethereum, or whatever cryptocurrency you're using and switch it back to fiat dollars, a euro, British pounds, Canadian dollars, US dollars, you can do the exchange of going back and forth and it just allows you to access many other popular coins that are out there as well as some you may have never heard of. Now, by using Trust Wallet, you have access to over 160,000 blockchains or assets uh, and it's a popular reason to use it. This app also has a pretty good reputation. It's been around for a while. It does not keep any of your personal data. And now another nice thing about Trust Wallet is that it supports ERC-20 which allows you to interact with other decentralized apps or dApps uh, within it. So this means if you're into NFTs and you want access and purchase it from NFTs from their marketplaces like Rarible or Air NFT, you can do so. You can also swap coins for other ones not found on exchanges by using PancakeSwap or Uniswap. So that's a little bit of background about Trust Wallet and its features. Let's get into installing it and checking it out. Uh, at our Android device, we're going to open up the Google Play Store and in the search menu at the top, we're just going to type in Trust. The Trust Wallet will be the first thing that pops up there. You can click on Install and it'll begin the installation. It's not a very big file, it just takes a minute or so for it to download and then install. And once it's complete, we can click on the Open button and it'll launch the application. Once the wallet is open, it'll ask you to create a new wallet or import an existing one. We're gonna create a new wallet. And then we have the privacy policy terms of services that we'll select and click on continue. Uh, and right now it's asking you to create a backup of your wallet right now, which is a great idea. You should do this right away. Uh, it's gonna give you a passphrase. Now this passphrase, you're gonna to want to save on a paper copy of it anywhere, but on your device. Uh, if you ever need to recover it, you can go back to this passphrase and paste it back onto your phone. After it's finished, it'll let you know that it's been successfully created. You can tap on done, and then you'll get prompted to enable, enable push notifications. That's up to you if you want it on. And you're at your home screen for the wallet. Now that you have it installed, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is set up a passcode. We can do that by clicking on settings, and then inside settings, go to security, and then we can toggle on the passcode. It blacks out here on my screen as I enter in the code. It's a six digit code. You go ahead and type it in twice, and then accept the changes. Once that section is complete, you'll return back to the security window and you have an option below that says lock method. Now you can change your lock method to the passcode or you can also switch it to biometric. So if you have a face scan or fingerprint reader, it'll, you can use that as an alternate measure to unlock and lock your account. And then you can back out of security. If you wanna change the default currency that you're using, you can click on preferences and at the top you can select currency and inside currency, you can then select the default currency that you want to use and then click on the back button. Now under DAP, we can enable and disable DAPs here as well. It takes care of that section. We can return back to the main screen. Now here on the main screen, we have four default tokens available. And if you don't want to use one of those and you're probably going to want to add something else, you can click on the options menu at the top. And in here, you can search for the token. We'll use Doge as an example. You can either type it in or you can just scroll through the list and search for the token that you want. So we can toggle it on and here at the main screen, we can see that it's listed here for easy accessibility. For each coin, we have three options available to send, receive, or buy. I'm gonna quickly go over those with you. We'll use Bitcoin as an example. So we'll tap on that, then we'll tap on send. And then you can paste in the recipient's address at the top and then below you enter in the amount of Bitcoin that you wanna to send to them. To receive, you click on the receive option. It gives you a QR code as well as an address. At the bottom, you can click on the copy button 
And then you can basically take this address and paste it in instant messenger or an email. Um, you can also set the amount that you want and then send it to an individual or share it with an individual. If you toggle over at the top to finance, you can start staking coins. Now what staking allows you to do is earn interest over a period of time uh, on whatever cryptocurrency that you're selecting. And once you've selected it, you're basically locking it for a set period of time. That could be days, that could be weeks, that could be months. You're basically specifying it. And for each token, it could be different or each coin, it could be different. So you gotta just walk through that process of selecting which one and see which one suits your needs and what's best for you. Under the collectibles tab, you can store any NFTs that you've purchased like pets or avatars and it gets stored and saved here. Now at the bottom, we can switch over to dApps and these are the decentralized apps. And now you can get connected to different communities like NFTs or you can do swaps as well. Let's use Rarible as an example. You can then sign in using your wallet as an authentication measure and then sign into Rarible in this instance and buy an NFT and you can use your crypto to buy NFT directly through this app, which is pretty useful. Uh, it's also very interesting. You can also do a lot more reading about this. Uh, next is gonna be the DEX, which is the exchange. Inside the exchange, this is where you can go ahead and buy cryptocurrency. You also have the option at the top to select swap so you can switch from coin to coin. So you can take a Bitcoin, switch it to Ethereum, vice versa, and basically switch to any type of coin that you want or buy any type of coin that you want. That's the main purpose of the exchange. Now, so that takes care of the overview of the Trust Wallet and its capabilities and what you can do with the app. Um, it's a little bit generalized right now, uh, but what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be creating another video on actually purchasing coins and doing transactions. Maybe I'll do an NFT as well. And I'll go a little bit more granular in that. This video will be posted on my other channel called Crypto Jar. Uh, that channel is exclusively for cryptocurrency and tutorials. So I'll be posting a lot more videos like this, going a little bit more in depth and walking you through the process. And I'll link in the description for that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.